In today's screencast, we'll be talking about function decorators, their uses in Python, and why they're helpful, and how to write your own using classes and functions. A decorator is merely a function that takes a callable and returns another callable. Now, you may be wondering what a callable is. A callable is anything that be, can be called, so functions like main, like we've used before, or anything that you can call from the command line or in a function, or anything like that. This may s seem a bit uh, trivial, but this will really come into play in understanding how decorators work. And in classes, classes can also be callable besides the init, but they need to implement a dunder call function, which allows them to be callable. Like in, like unlike many other languages, functions are first class citizens in Python, meaning that you can pass them around like variables and or objects, which will also come into play today when talking about decorators. So to start off our discussion, I'm just going to quickly implement a cacher class, which will take a function as an argument and then call that particular function. If it has been previously called, it will do a lookup in the cache, which is a dictionary of all the previous calls and use its signature in order to determine and retrieve the correct response without actually having to execute it, thus implementing a cache. So let's start off by declaring our cacher class. We'll first implement a simple version of this and then we'll grow it to reach what our end goal here is, which is to have it cache all the calls made to it. So we'll have this take a function as an argument. We will then go self.function equal to function. We'll then have it callable. And like I said earlier, these methods are callable and return callables. We're going to implement it under call self. And then we're going to, we're going to take all the arguments, keyword args. So the syntax here that you see me doing here, which is incorrect at the moment, there it goes. These two are all the args that we could pass to any function. Seeing as we don't know what arguments are going to come from the function that this is wrapping in, we have to consider all the possible arguments and keyword arguments. And that's what all that this is saying is. Saying is take up all the arguments and keyword arguments passed from our function. And then we simply pass those down. So all we do here is go return self.function, which is what we assigned from before, which is our function that we received in the in it. Equal to we're not going to equal it to anything. We're going to just simply call it args keyword args. So as you can see here, we are calling. This portion is like any other method call. Ignore this part. Anywhere you see this, we're going to replace with whatever function we pass to it. And then these two brackets here are the actual call to the callable. So that's what's going to happen when we call this function. Now we're just going to quickly write out the rest of this class. Sorry, the rest of this example. So if main, I'm going to call, have, call, have main call this. We're going to also print the function that we're going to decorate. We're going to call this hello world. It's going to do simply print hello world. This is awesome. And then we're going to define our main method here. Or we can just simply call hello world here. Awesome. So I'm just going to run this real fast just to show you there's nothing on my sleeve. Python decorators. Prince hello world, awesome. Now we're gonna decorate it with cashier. Decorate it with cashier, run it again. As you can see, nothing special happened. It simply falls through and runs the hello world. Now, the interesting here thing is, is I'd like you to just pause the video right now and maybe take a guess at how these things are gonna come out. So for example, we're going to go print in the init of cacher. Then we're going to go print in the call of cacher. So I would just like for you guys to quickly just take a guess of how these things will print out in what order. Will it be in the call of cacher, in the native cacher, then hello world? Will it be hello world in the native cacher, in the call of cacher? Or will it be in it 
call, call. So we're back. So as you can see here, the first thing that was called is the knit of the cacher. So as it hits the function here, it hits the cacher portion. Then it hits the call of cacher, which is the callable. Then it calls the function at the very end. So this is this is how this flow of a particular decorator works. First it initializes the decorator, then it calls the call method of the decorator, since as I said earlier, a decorator is a callable, which takes a callable, and then its call here is return. So technically this portion here isn't actually run. It is called from within the call function of the decorator. As you can see here. If we don't if we don't call it we do that here all it does is goes in native cacher cacher call and that's all that happens but this is the portion where the call actually does take place now seeing as keyword arcs can't be cannot be uh, hashed we're going to remove this from our argument and our cacher will only deal with function types of that take args not keyword arguments and since our cache is going to be a simple dict it's going to be something like that and we are gonna try here to get self dot cache. We're gonna do a lookup with the args, since if we have a function that takes arguments and its output is saved, we can then ask for its output another time if the same set of arguments have, are passed back to the function, which makes sense to have the args as the key. So we're gonna try that. I'm going to try to return that. And if it isn't there, it'll accept. And then what we want to do is go ret is equal to, so not ret, um, value is equal to self dot cache. Now we're going to set the cache now. Args is equal to self dot function. And then we're going to pass it the args. So this is the actual call. This is setting the dictionary that we passed from our cache up here. And this is setting the value. Or, oh, sorry there. Sorry about that. And then that's, set, that's setting the dictionary above with the arguments passed in. So we can then look it up later if it's previously happened. And it's setting that to value. And then we return value. And we're going to move this above so we know what's happening here. We're then going to change this method a little bit. Let's change this to an add, which takes an X and a Y. And we want to return X plus Y. call this add down here awesome so we have this written up now so the flow will be init call the init function create assign function to self dot function and create a empty dict for our cache we're going to call the callable we're going to return try to return try to get a return from the cache with our arguments as the key if that doesn't work, then we accept. We call the function because it wasn't previously called, so it's not in our cache. We're going to assign that to the to the dictionary with the key of the args, which is its signature here. And then we will return, we will assign all that to value, and then we'll return value. So as you can see, we're calling it with five and six. It's calling the init, it's calling the cacher, and then it's calling the, the comp more complex call method with the cache. So you may be wondering, is it actually caching the actual example? So that's very easy to determine. We're going to print add again. We're going to go past the arguments one more time to the same thing in the same instance of the cacher object. So if we call this twice, it should have a reference to the other thing the next time. And in order to see what's happening, we're going to put in a PDB statement. For those of you unfamiliar with that, that'll drop a stack trace stop point in our code so we can then execute arbitrary Python code while we're inspecting what's going on. 
so we can see the flow of what's going on inside here. Very useful for debugging many types of things. So let's quickly take a look here. Let's run this real fast. So we're at the try try catch now. We're going to try to see if it's in the thing. Nope, we got a key error saying this isn't a key that we have. It's going to skip the return. It's going to go to the set block. It's going to go self.function star args. Which will return 11, which will assign a value, which will return, which we will print. So it'll print 11. So we're now again in the call of cache here. We have our args here. Perfect. So let's try the self.cache call. Let's try it by hand here with the key of args. Boom, and it, re it will return an 11. And then it hits the return. And then it will print it. So as you can see, the thing works. So if we call this twice, if we call this again, we have to remove the breakpoint. You can see it didn't it see it only knitted it once it called it once with the 11 and then it called it the second time with the same arguments but instead of actually running the function it only returned it from the cache so if we want to get really anal and test that we can simply go here import pdb pdb dots trace so it should go in here the first time because it's not in the cache, so it'll actually call the function there for by hitting this. But the second time it shouldn't. So we should only have to press continue once to get through the stack trace or to get past the trace that we set here in the add function. So we're going to go ahead and call that. We're going to press continue and then it returns. So as you saw, it only caught us once asking us to go x, return x and y. But the second time it looked us up in the dictionary. One more thing I'd like to discuss before we conclude this week's screencast is that this don't let this decorator syntax fool you. All that's happening is we are I'm going to just remove that for now. All we are doing is creating an instance. So we're going to create an instance of the cache class. Cacher class. All it takes is a function as an argument, which we have a function here. We're going to pass that function that we want to decorate add. We are then going to call the cacher cache or function with the arguments we would to the add which would be five and six in our case respectively so we're going to just go ahead and print this and we're going to do it again just to show you that it does actually work five and six so all this is doing is going create an instance of this cache which takes a function as well as creates a dictionary which we are using as our cache assign that to cache and then call which is the callable portion again the callable portion is really important, so you should you should watch this a couple more times if you don't get this. But this portion calls this makes is what makes this a callable. Implementing this, especially in the class form, in functions that's another bag of worms, which we'll discuss in next week's screencast. But in when dealing with decorators that are classes, you need to implement the dunder call, which implements the behavior for the callable. So we're passing arguments five and six. If it checks the cache, if it's there, if not, it runs like we did before. So just to show you that this works, we're gonna leave the PDB statement in here showing you that it does in fact catch. We're going to run it. It's saying return X, Y. We're going to continue and there it is. So it knitted once like we had here. It then called the caller, got caught because we had to actually make the call. And then the second time we didn't because it hit the cache. So we have summarized how to create your own decorator using a class. We emphasize the importance of understanding what a callable is. In next week's screencast, we're going to show you how to avoid decorator masking, as well as understanding nested functions, and a few things about closures, but I'll hopefully try to avoid that because it just complicates understanding of functions. And we will conclude our talk on decorators next week.